We have to be ready. You, me, the others. There's an attack coming from far away. Here's your look at the Hot Toys Justice League Batman Tactical Batsuit version. The product code for this tactical bat suit is MMS432. In this review, we're also going to be having a look at the Sideshow exclusive that will come with accessories that can't be found in the standard release. Before we get this review underway, we're going to first figure out how tall tactical suit Batman is. I've gone just past the top of his head. Instead, going to the top of his ear and stopping the tape measure right there. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the tactical suit Batman, not that this would be a gauge by my fingers, but by this tells us that it's 12.8 inches in height. In centimeters, though, the figure stands at a very impressive 32.6 centimeters tall. For Batman's display stand, you'll probably recognize this stand from a previous review that I'd done. It so happened to also be the Justice League Wonder Woman, which shares the exact same display stand as that of Batman. It's that ramp way in which the League are exiting out. Um, and then you, on the front, you've got the Batman tactical suit done here on the front placard. That's the only thing that's different to it. The rest of the display stand looks like it's exactly the same. It does look good, but the same problem that I had with the Wonder Woman still holds true, unfortunately, to Batman. As great as the stand may be, limitations to certainly where you display your figures will dictate whether you display it with this display stand or not. As great as the stand looks, and it's got some great texturing to it and details, it is, again, a boils down to really the limitations of where you have to display your figures. I have my figures primarily in Detolfs, for example. That's where I keep my figures. So if I want to have, say, multiples of these, you can imagine quickly how one would really shadow whatever it is behind it, unless all the figures that you have in your display cabinet would be of all the same height. Then that maybe wouldn't be so much of an issue. But it certainly still does take up a lot of space. And I feel I have to stress that. These type of display stands and even the ones that we've looked at also from Hot Toys that come with the cardboard backdrops, in which this one does not actually come with, but even like those cardboard backdrops for many of the Suicide Squad releases look good if you have the space to afford it. If you don't, however, I think these ones are really better suited for shelving rather than a cabinet. Cabinets. If you have these guys again in a cabinet, you probably don't have a whole lot of space to start working with and where you can start including things like, as good as the stand is, something like this display stand. Why don't we discuss as well the Sideshow exclusive part of this component? Much like the Wonder Woman, which I also picked up as a Sideshow exclusive, the Sideshow exclusive version of Batman, wow, I just said Sideshow exclusive a whole lot of times, comes with a human mother box. The uh, Wonder Woman that we had to look at, by all means, feel free to check out that review after you get a gander at this review. 
Um, that one also come, came with the Amazonian mother box. So I'm sure Aquaman will come with his corresponding mother box and then we'll have the three completes. Up to this point, I'm sure everybody has already been more than aware that I don't think the chances of us getting a cyborg in the Hot Toys lineup, I don't think that's gonna happen. So that makes me a little sad. As much as I have really been collecting all of these, despite unfortunately the flaws and the failures of Justice League, I have been collecting these figures and every single one that has been released or previewed on Sideshow's website I've immediately put down as uh, an installment payment plan. And uh, Batman certainly was just paid for. He finally did arrive. And uh, it's again, it's a shame. I know, talking about, I know we're not talking about the mother box, but it is a shame that we're not going to get ourselves Cyborg. At the very least, I would hope Hot Toys would finally decide, complete the league, if anything else. Anyways, I know we're not, not really talking about Cyborg, but Oh, I hope we do get a cyborg just to finish off everything, all the collection. You would hate to have, I mean, the same thing happened. Oh, I'm going off on a rant. I'm not going to, I don't want to go off on a rant. Okay, I'll just quickly say the one problem with no matter how successful a movie is, if you are planning to start a line, either don't start the line or start it and finish it completely. The other example that I can think of very quickly coming to my mind is the fact that we got ourselves the Lone Ranger Tonto. And because the movie didn't do well, they pulled the plug on Lone Ranger himself. At the very least, finish the course, you know what I mean? Give us all the figures in this line, or don't give us any figures of the line. It sort of feels incomplete. Okay, let's rant aside. Having a look at the mother box, though, the human mother box, it is heavy. In fact, even in the instructions, it says, be careful. And I, funny enough, I think they even showed, don't drop it on your foot. And somebody making an ouchie. Uh, look on their face. It is heavy though. I mean, it's it feels solid. I don't know what the material is. I would imagine it's still plastic. It certainly doesn't feel metal, but uh, it is heavy. It's finished all the way around. All the sides seem to mirror one another, although the texturing you'll see on the sides, on the outer areas here, do change slightly. They're not the same all the way around. But again, I've got myself Wonder Woman with the Sideshow exclusive that came with her corresponding box. It would be only fitting then that I pre-ordered the Batman as the Sideshow exclusive, which came with this box. If you get the standard release, everything you're looking at from this point forward will be the exact same thing in the standard release. The only thing that would be omitted if you don't get the Sideshow exclusive will be just this mother box here. Normally, this would have been the time in which we'd look at the figure first and foremost, but I think for the circumstances, I'm going to work backwards. I'm actually going to do the opposite. Instead of looking at the figure, I'm going to look at the accessories first, then we'll dabble deeper into the Batman figure because there's a lot of like little things you have to tweak to him. So I think it would just be easier if I looked at the accessories first and foremost. Some of these accessories do make reappearances from perhaps the Batman v Superman or the subsequent later release, which I was lucky enough able to jump on board, the uh, Suicide Squad Batman, and that would be the grapple gun. The grapple gun doesn't look like it's any bit different than it was the original release. I feel as if maybe the handle could have been a little bit darker on this version, but I think it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. The uh, bat grapple gun is a nice design, otherwise quite a little bit more practical, I would say, uh, both the Nolan Universe Batman and, of course, the uh, Snyder released uh, Batman. Both had grapple guns that I think that looked a little bit more practical versus the Tim Burton Batman, which would have a much smaller grapple gun. Doesn't really make sense how that could practically work. Here, this looks like something that you could engineer and create yourself. Of course, if you had a little bit more money and the practical tools behind to produce such a thing. Um, much like the other Batman as well, comes with a series of grapple hooks. These are completely closed up, closed up shop. And you get two of these. Where's the other one? There's the other one right there. You get two of these and they, they just slide into the grooves. I, think, I can't really think why I would want to ever either I don't know why I would want to ever leave these off, I guess is the point I wanted to make. Entertaining the idea that I would want to glue these just in place so they don't fall out, I realized quickly, well, oh, it's a higher end collectible. I feel like I'm doing a disservice by gluing things in place. Uh, I have noticed though that these 
along with the ones that I had with the Suicide Squad Batman, are very prone, like these parts do fall out. If you bang the arm, of course these will fall out, because they're only really sitting in those little grooves. Um, the other thing it comes with is a fully extended grapple hook, which can go onto the end here. Now you can go with both versions if you want to, well either version. You can take this one off and try not to bang this one here. You can put this one on the end as well. Now this one does sit looser. It really isn't intended to be put into the barrel, but I mean if you wanted to and wanted to make it look like it hasn't extended and uh, opened up yet, you can do that as well. They're really intended though for this little side grooves, those little notches on the sides. And then you can either have the extended hook, not yet fired, or again, you can have variations to the fired off hook, which again, all make reappearances from the original Batman that we had looked at before. This, by the way, is a wire. Uh, you could, in theory, bend it. I wouldn't advise it though, because bending wires, you never get them back and straight the way that they were intended to be. And uh, the wire just kind of sits in place. It actually goes further past, of course, the opening of the hole, and there's probably a smaller hole inside in which that roots itself into, and it doesn't go anywhere. If you want something a little bit more dynamic, deja vu, I know, we're experiencing it right now. This plugs also into place further back once again, and it's almost as if it's just about fired the shot off. Uh, it fully hasn't taken wind, if you will, and carried on its way, so it's a little bit more loose, a little bit more relaxed in the cording. And then again, there's the two variations between the two. If this isn't your thing, and your Batman already, of course, has your grapple gun displayed with it, there is obviously a secondary option, which is, I just happen to have it on the side of the camera here, is a secondary grapple line. And uh, this one's a little bit more advanced, kind of almost looking as if it's a camera than it is anything else. Um, this is like the, I believe this is the grapple line, but according to like Sideshow's website, this is indicated as a grapple gun, but I think it's actually the net gun. I would have to go back and watch Justice League again. I believe this is the net gun that fires out and catches the parademon. We'd have to go back and re-watch that movie, which despite what other people feel, I don't feel like that's too painful of a task. Both that and Suicide Squad, really badly received by critics and viewers alike, are two movies I actually find I enjoy. They're not something I would relig religiously go back and watch frequently, but I certainly don't cringe when I go back and re-watch either one of those films, or even like Batman v Superman, I quite still enjoy to this day. So we'd have to go back. I don't think this is as simply a case of just labeling this as a grapple gun and calling it a day. I think it is actually the web line, the net line. Needless to say, it's a pretty nice detailed accessory piece, accompanying piece for Batman's already existing arsenal here. The figure also gets a trio of Batarangs, which, as you can see, doesn't look like they're different from one another at all. Normally, they would be done just cast solely in silver, but you can see that they've just kind of splashed or sprinkled a little bit of darker gray in there as well. All of these are just of a plastic variety, so they are a little bit more brittle. You want to be careful with these. Don't want to necessarily say brittle, but certainly when you are putting it into the hand of Batman, you would want to be careful with these. They are not metal after all. But uh, nice little batarangs. I always appreciate when we get stuff like this, even though really we've gotten stuff like this already. It's still nice, a little nice added bonus as well. In between looking at the grapple gun and looking now at the batarangs, I went back and just kind of checked that scene again. In fact, I think the the netting was shot out from Batman's more traditional grapple gun and not this one right here. So this is, again, just a secondary grapple gun. Moving along. Other things that come included with this particular Batman, you get yourself not one, not two, but three bat grenades. There's nothing really on it to tell you they're bat grenades. They're just spheres of destructive death, but there's nothing really on there. It's not gone are the days of the 66 Batman, where of course this would have probably had a big bright yellow bat logo on here, nor does it really look like the shape of a bat. No, it's just round circular spheres, but uh, they are the bat grenades. You get three of them. And for what they're worth, I mean, if you are to display Batman with these in his hand, not likely I would, but it's nice again that you get these as some extra accessories to go with. 
Then, of course, Batman gets himself a series of interchangeable hands currently in his hands. I've got himself some partially relaxed gripping hands. But Batman also comes with fully relaxed hands. There's the front, the in, inner palms of them. And there's the, let me just flip these around for you. There's the back side with the brass knuckle uh, plates uh, embedded into the, uh, the tops of his hands, tops of his fingers. He gets a pair of relaxed hands. Of course, he gets a pair of, oh, excuse me, gets a pair of closed fists. That was actually intentional. Closed fists are fine and good, but I never find them overly exciting, especially when Batman, like a character like Batman, you would want to have him displayed with something a little bit more exciting, like case in point. He also comes with a Batarang uh, hand. And let's just reach over. Where did I put the bat Batarangs? There they are right there. Uh, there is a little notch or a little opening there in between the pointer finger and the thumb. You simply just take the batarang and slide that into place. Now, I did mention these are brittle or thinner, so you want to be careful when you are putting them in there. You also want to make sure that when you are putting them in between the thumb and the pointer finger, you're not actually putting it in straight down. Straight down will hit the resistance of this finger right here, and you're going to put pressure on it. Instead, you actually want to put it in on an angle there you go, and it slides in between. It even peaks its way there. Hello there, Batarang. Sticks its way all the way through, and Batman has the Batarang in his hand. I guess, ideally, there's enough space. You could probably put more than one Batarang, but I think one is enough. We don't want to get overly crazy with that. Batman also comes with some other things, but I think some of which more are suited for it once we look at the figure, because it involves, of course, the changing of the eyes, the changing of the mouths, and then, of course, his bat goggles. That's not really their actual names, but we'll have a look at all of those after we have a look at this figure. Here, Batman is done up in his new tactical suit. A little bit more of a flexible suit versus the one that he had donned to battle the Man of Steel. This is obviously something that has a little bit more give to it, but a little bit more armored up than the conventional bat suit that he had at the beginning of Justice League. Looking at his face, now this is of course something that I wanted very strongly to talk about. I feel like it's there's something missing on the face. I can't quite put my finger on what exactly that is, but I find on some angles, this side right here, it looks better and more closer to Ben Affleck than it does straight on. I wondered if maybe perhaps the mouth was too far down, and I don't think that's necessarily the case. There are actually three different face plates. There's this one. Now, this one wasn't the one that came defaulted out of the packaging. It was this mouth right here. Which, if you look at it, proportionately, the lips are in the proper area of the face where the mouth should be. If you want to change out the mouths, for example, these are just on magnets. They're a little harder to kind of get your finger in there. But you just want to kind of push the one side. And if you can get your finger then on the other side where that ledge now creates, you just pull it off via the magnet. And once again, there's what the Batman's face looks like until we put in the new Batman lower half. Now once that's in place, again, something seems off. Maybe it's not so much the mouth that's off, it's this piece right here. Again, from the side it doesn't look so bad, but from the front I feel like there's something about it that doesn't look like Ben Affleck. I think the lower mouth they've got actually quite correct. They've added some additional airbrushing in there as well, so it's slightly a darker shade. Most of these are generally hand-painted as well. There's some a little bit of that bat stubble that Ben Affleck's Batman would have that really a lot of the other Batmans didn't possess. Now again, there's this mouth's, uh, mouth portrait. There's also this one right here where the teeth are showing. Or if you want something much, much more exaggerated, there's also this one as well, which I've really uh, actually entertained the idea of displaying the figure with, in all honesty. Speaking of displaying him with, uh, Batman, you'll probably recall, doesn't really have, most of the time, most of the time, doesn't have the cowl looking like this primarily. He's, of course, got the bat goggles, which, again, I've just called it the bat goggles. Uh, but again, like, the face is okay. There's something that's missing. I can't quite put my finger on what exactly that is. I didn't realize, actually, that there was so much kind of swooshing texturing that was added to the cowl. I thought it was actually a lot smoother than what I'm actually seeing here in the figure. You'll excuse me also if you hear a little bit of sweeping around. It's actually the cape that's just dragging itself on my backdrop as I'm trying to get closer looks at the figure here. 
Uh, it's got some nice combinations of textures where you've got the mesh down below of his body armor. But then again, you've got the smoother kind of lined texturing here that makes up the majority of the side of his cowl as well as the top of the cowl. In fact, the only place that is without a texture is this area around his eyes. And again, I didn't realize that that was necessarily the case. Again, does it look like Ben Affleck? It does in some ways, but still yet there's something about it that I find very off-putting, very off. As for the rest of his outfits, again, this is, you can kind of see how the plating would have gone over top of his existing armor. So like his regular bat suit in theory is really underneath all this. And then he's just put these plates, these strapped plates over his shoulders, over his arms, and of course in front of his torso, which I would imagine has most of the, the additional plating over top of this. He still has the much larger bat emblem. One of which, one of the details I quite liked about the new Ben Affleck costume was it did have that big bat emblem. One of my personal favorites. It's got some good coloring in here, I have to admit. The blacks as well as the additional gold add a, just a little extra excitement to an otherwise gray palette that Batman's costume is. One thing I do want to stress though is these little gauntlets on the side. The instructions indicate that they're sharp. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're sharp, but they're prickly, especially the end pieces here. Batman and me have had a long, torrid history in which any of the hot toy figures that I've had for Batman, at least of the Michael Keaton variety, one way or another, I always end up breaking one of these. It's just by moving it, I put my finger against, and of course, the Michael Keaton Batman had a much different shape very prone to breaking. These ones are a little flatter, not as much damage can be done, but uh, they are a little on the pricklier side and they are certainly, I can't stress this enough, very thin. Don't wanna put a lot of pressure against those. Down below, we move further down. We've got, again, the bat gloves. I'm really adding just bat in front of a lot of these things. The gloves are a different coloring to that of the, uh, the medium and darker gray. Uh, these things, by the way, do move around. You may find yourself, as you're posing your Batman, you may find yourself wanting just to bring these back up as they will kind of wiggle their way down. Gauntlets sort of sit loose as well, but thank goodness the gloves are sort of in the way of that, that these aren't going to slide right off and onto the floor. Again, you've got some additional armor that's now been added to the thigh area. The knees now have kneecaps to them, and he's also got uh, shin guards, Com combining, you can see the lighter coloring of very scratched and dented metal plates. And then you've got plates underneath that as well. I would imagine, again, this outfit is much more agile for Batman to be moving around versus the armored Batman that fought Superman in Batman v Superman. Uh, the bat utility belt. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop adding bat in the front of everything. The utility belt seems tried and true, the same one that we had gotten before done in gold and some dark grays around the outer areas of the pockets. One thing I do want to bring your attention to, by the way, there's Batman's boots and there's the under treads of the boots. One thing I do want to bring your attention to, I don't want to alarm and give you guys nightmares, but I'm going to go ahead and take and flip the figure around. Here's the cape in which he's got. It's a nice textured cape, actually. It's got like just different designs to it that it's not just a very basic ho-hum cape. But something I want to bring your attention to is I just moved the cape out of the way. What is going on with Batman's behind? I don't understand why it has to be as big and certainly as profound and pronounced as it is. It really sticks out. I mean, there is his leg. There's his thigh right there. And there's his back. Could we not have done something a little bit more? I understand, of course, they have to make sure the articulation will still work on this figure. And I understand for the fact that the cape is going to be covering off on this. But still, Hot Toys, that's a little bit, that's a little bit ridiculous. I can't imagine Ben Affleck's behind, not that I would give much thought to it, would be this bulky. This is what we're getting here with Batman's behind. Luckily, again, the cape is going to cover over it. Here's the zipper. I wouldn't know why you would want to be taking off the outfit, but there's the zipper for the costume. And again, the cape just drapes over it. Now everybody is going to be only thinking about Batman's behind. Okay, well, why don't we talk about something other than Batman's behind? Sounds good? Okay, everybody can agree on that? Okay, sounds good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the cape forward. I'm going against the natural fold of it, because really the cape isn't supposed to drape forward like this when you're posing it. 
I mean, this would be the mark of anybody that doesn't know how to pose a Batman figure. Of course, the cape has to be folded back. The reason why I did do that is I did want to pop the head off. Um, I did find that the head was a lot easier to remove on the tactical suit Batman than I found with the Suicide Squad Batman. The reasoning also why I wanted to take this off was to show you that inside he does have swappable eyes. Not the easiest things to do either, but he does have eyes that look one way, this way, this way here. He has the eyes that face forward, and then of course for anyone that feels left out facing the opposite way, he also has those eyes going on there as well. Now these are very tricky to get into. They give you a tool, this is what the tool looks like here, and you're supposed to just kind of pop it out. But unfortunately, you sort of have to kind of put it in on an angle for it to to uh, to go in and to come out. And even, I find it's just easier just to shake out the eyes to get the Batman eyes to pop out. I did notice there was a little bit of paint that was on the end of Batman's nose that was left off. Um, it's not something, again, you're going to see too much of. Now, again, when you put it back in, you would take the prongs and in theory, you would just put this around Batman, but as you can see, it doesn't give you a whole lot of clearance. In fact, when you are already starting to push it in, it wants to pop back out. So again, you wanna just turn it in on its side. Then once it's in, rotate it, and then you can just kind of line it up to Batman's eye sockets. And again, it's not the easiest thing to do, but once you get that in place, you can also kind of take the tool out if you want, and then with your finger, just go in there and then just push, just push the eyes through. There you go. And that's how you change out the eyes. The mouth, we've already discussed the mouth. There's no real easy way to do it other than just kind of grabbing the sides and uh, just popping it away that, that way. So there you go, that's, that's the bat cowl. A lot easier to, like I said, remove than some of the instances that we've had before. One thing I also wanted to show you as well is the goggles. Now, we didn't look at this before, but there are these little sections on either side here that you are supposed to pull off. When you pull them off, make sure immediately you put them somewhere. You just untab them like so. Take the other side, untab it like so. And now you've got these holes on the sides of either, either side of Batman's cowl. You then get the two versions of the goggles. These are something I stress about so much. I don't like goggles or glasses when it comes included with Hot Toys figures. I know figures like a Tony Stark that come with glasses or Batman here comes with goggles. The figures are intended to have those, but there's something nerve wracking about how thin this plastic is. I don't want to do this too often because again, I don't want this to accidentally break on me. But if you want to see how those come together, of course, I would have to show you guys this. So there are two versions. Now, let me just actually, I had the right version the first way around. There is now the bridge. This bridge goes up, up like this. This is the part that goes over the nose. It's not, it's not the other way around. You are going to tab one side in like that. Then you're going to, this is the part I don't like, stretch it across. You don't have to stretch it by by too much. And then you're just going to tab that into place as well. In the process of doing that, I see that I've dislocated Batman's eyes. So we'll just kind of go back in and see if we can just push the eyes back through. The eyes, unless you're fully planting them in place, will likely, and it's already happened to me a handful of times now, the eyes will come off, come loose too frequently. Make sure I just got these spun around. Uh, it goes this way. There we go. So put these in. You can also use the tool as well to just aid you, just to get them in the proper placement. And then once you have in them in the proper placement, again, you can just remove the tool and push it through with your fingers. So again, we just push that through. There we go. Once that's roughly in the, in the place where you need it, then you can just push Batman's eyes all the way in. There we go. All right. So there's what, that's what Batman looks like with the goggles up. Now these aren't adjusted, are adjustable, so you can't take the goggles and push them down over top of his eyes. This is a good look if you want the goggles up. Personally speaking, I kind of like the goggles down, especially for the fact that I think that the eyes or something about the face seems off. I think the goggles sort of help to fix that. 
So what I would do myself, I would display the Batman with goggles down. And it's just a case of, once again, untabbing these. Be very careful, pop those off. Take the other goggles, which angled now down, tab that into place, tab this into place. There we go. And there you have this Batman, which I personally think looks much better. There's something to be said for the fact that he's got the goggles covering over his eyes that in a way actually makes him look more like Batman than I thought it did without the goggles even in place. Something makes him look a little bit more like Batman. And then once you get that all set up, you just tab this back into place like that. And then you're just gonna take the cape once again and just drape it over. Many people feel like this Batman mimicked, at least look-wise, to, was it, Night Owl? I'm trying to think of the character's name from Watchmen. I certainly see that when I look at this Batman here, especially like the goggle area. It does look very much like that character from Watchmen. Um, again, I do really like the look of Batman once you've got the goggles in place. In fact, even one further, I just take the mouth plate off. This is the mouth that I wanted to consider using. Where is the mouth? This is the mouth right here. And even though I don't have, nor I don't think Hot Toys is planning a 1-6 scale Batmobile for this particular Batman, this is probably gonna be the, the look that I'm gonna go with this Batman. I like the mouth open, I like the teeth visible, and I certainly like the goggles down rather than having them up. Now that I've got the look that I want for the Cape Crusader. By the way, it was Night Owl 2 from Watchmen. Night Owl 2. Now that we have Batman in the way that at least I desire, we're going to go ahead and look at his articulation. So his head rotates back and forth. Essentially, it's basically rotating on that prong, ta uh, prong tab that connected to the interior of his head. And the head rotates back and forth. Unfortunately, as you can probably gather, the cowl, the neck portion of the cowl is attached to his head. You can't move the head up and down independently. I get why they didn't want to do that. I mean, it keeps the sculpt consistently flowing from the neck area all the way up into the cowl, like it did in the movie. Um, a good, again, also, if you had the little part where the head was separate from the neck, you would have a big, sharp line cutting off, where clearly this was a separate piece from the rest of the neck. Uh, the upper torso, a lot of this is very limited. So like things like waist and like ab crunches, you do feel like there is something that's working in there. But because Batman is so bulky, both in the film and in the Hot Toys release here, there really isn't a whole lot that you can do with the waist, nor is there a lot you can do with the ab crunch or waist swivel. Any, any of this area here is basically limited to having zero articulation. Sorry to disappoint everybody there. Uh, the arms do move forward, uh, they do move back. Uh, mileage, of course, may vary because he's got, s while he doesn't have padding necessarily, like if you were to feel all of this, this is all the figure itself. There's no additional padding that's been done to it. It's a very bulky frame that they've given Batman here. It does still afford a little bit of possibility back and forth. Um, a little bit more than I was really expecting, like the arms can hinge out that way, and equally so, you can rotate the arms out that way. And f once again, forward and back. You can swivel at the bicep. You can bend at the elbow with what looks to be a double hinge happening in the elbow. Um, the hands rotate all the way around and they also hinge back and forth. Um, even though, like I said, there's no waist swivel, the legs split out. You can also move them forward and you can move them back. You get a very much a ratcheted joint happening here. Even when you are moving the leg, you can kind of feel like a click, click, click as you're moving the legs forward and back. Look at this. Oh, I'm not even going to bring, bring any more attention to that. There is, in theory, a leg cut. There's a swivel on the top of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee. Uh, you got to be careful, though, when you are rotating or bending the knee. Because the knee, well, because the the knee pad is the way it is, it's separate really from this piece and this piece here. If you bend the knee too much, you run the problem that the straps on either side that wrap all the way around on the, on the knee guard get caught then underneath the plates of the thigh. So you want to just be careful of that. Uh, the feet hinge back and forth, ankle pivots, ankle rocking back and forth, and there's no toe articulation or anything like that. So Batman has sufficient amounts of posability. 
He's has on par with most of the Hot Toys Batman figures that we've looked at before. He, I would think he's a step up posability wise to what we would get with say like the original 89 Michael Keaton, which was really heavily encased in like a rubber suit. Uh, it limited what you could really do with it. Hot Toys has made many, many advancements in their six scale figure creations that Pat Batman like this, who are equally as bulky because of the materials that they have decided to go and move forward with using, you get a much more poseable Batman as a result of it. I still like this Batman. I like it more though with the goggles down. I think it fits and looks more like the Ben Affleck Batman from Justice League even though Justice League unfortunately is still sort of that stumbling block in the DC film universe, I think this is still a worthy pickup. Even if you didn't like Justice League, I like the overall design of this tactical suit Batman, and I think it's worth picking up, in my own honest opinion. You know, this might actually be the first instance in which we've looked at a Batman figure, a six scale Batman figure from Hot Toys, in which I've actually felt like the costume on the figure looked better than it did in the film. The reason why I say that is the tactical suit Batman costume, as well as just really the regular costume that Batman wore in the movie, I just thought it didn't look like Ben Affleck could really move around in it. It looked chunky. And I'm not just saying that necessarily. Poor Ben Affleck, of course, put on few pounds that's an understatement, between the initial shooting of Justice League and then unfortunately the ill-fated comeback reshoots that they had to do for the Josh Whedon uh, part of the film, or really what we eventually got in the theatrical release. There was something about both those costumes, the original costume and the tactical suit costume that Batman wore in those films, that I just felt like Batman couldn't move around. How could he possibly even move his arms and his legs when the, the costume looked as bulky as it did? Take that and then look at the six scale release of Batman that we've looked at over this review. I feel like this is much sleeker, fitted better to his body, and I feel like this Batman could actually do something in this costume. Now speaking of this costume, normally I'm also not a big fan of Batman films in which Batman has to introduce a new costume at the end of the movie. We've done that a lot, and we've seen that a lot with the Schumacher releases, where at the end of the film, Batman has a new costume for no reason whatsoever. Here, at least, I can justify why Batman would have had the tactical suit, understanding how much of a threat, really, the Parademons and Steppenwolf would be. I can understand why Batman would want to armor up. The armored suit that, of course, he fought the Man of Steel in would be way too bulky, so, of course, Batman had to improvise and come up with something that was still sleek, something that was still able and age, uh, agility-wise, and something, of course, that Batman could still move around in. And here we got the tactical suit, which, I, again, I really like. It does look a lot like the Night Owl 2 from Watchmen. And I get that. Many people have said that. But it is still a neat-looking costume. Hot Toys has done a really great job on this figure, even though I do think the head sculpt misses a mark slightly. The goggles sort of fix the problem that I think if you have the figure without the goggles, you notice it a lot more. With the goggles down, I think it's a better looking figure. When you have the goggles up, I do think there's a problem with the head sculpt. Either though, I'm still happy that I was able to pick this one up. This was one of those instances in which I used the payment plan on, on uh, Sideshow Collectibles website. So I paid this guy every single month until he eventually was paid off and he finally gave, uh, finally was shipped right to my door. I will say though, for Sideshow Collectibles, one thing that they do, they do really need to work on, they're super fast on shipping. Like the moment I paid the last payment plan uh, month for Tactical Suit Batman, he was shipped right away. And I got him right after being notified from Sideshow that he was shipped. I might have got him like two or three days later. And that's pretty good. The downside though, as I've mentioned in previous reviews, when they do ship it, they ship it by DHL, here at least in Canada. I think I ended up paying about $45 extra just to have this guy shipped to me. And that wasn't express shipment either. That was the shipment that Sideshow Collectibles opted to use. So even though the, the payment plan option is great, and I'm glad that you can do that with Sideshow Collectibles, they do really need to work on their shipping charges. The shipping charges are way too high. I don't mind waiting a few extra days for Batman if it doesn't mean I have to pay $45 to have something shipped to me when I've already paid and thought I paid all the shipping costs initially with this guy. Either way though, shipping costs aside and rants aside, a great looking figure, providing again you keep the goggles down. Um, 
Good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, Tactical Suit Batman is now available everywhere, really. Uh, you don't have to necessarily pick them up from Sideshow necessarily, but the benefit of going, again, of doing the Sideshow routes like I've done is that you can pay in installment plans so that you don't have to pay him outright. If you go on other online sites, usually they'll have you pay everything up front before they ship the figure to you. So if your wallet is a big concern, it certainly is for me, you may want to consider going over to the Sideshow Collectibles. You can pay with an installment plans. And I'm not just saying that. I didn't get this figure for free or anything like that. The only reason why I'm saying that is because I went the route myself of paying this guy with installment plans. Um, it didn't mean that I have to pay everything up front, and it means eventually when I'm paying off the figure, I'm currently paying off uh, the Superman, as well as the Flash and Aquaman. So eventually when those guys get all fully paid off, uh, reviews of those ones will come your way as well. Either way though, today guys, we were having a look at the new Hot Toys Justice League Batman in his tactical bat suit. A pretty decent looking figure. It's got some shortcomings and of course a really giant bat butt. All right, I just reminded everybody about his giant bat behind. Uh, but we were though having a look at the tactical suit Batman. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, my friends, my colleagues, because certainly more videos, more Hot Toys, and other six-scale figure reviews will be coming soon to this channel. So stay tuned for those. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.